I, I guess I will put this question out and ask each member to comment. I have a major concern about short-term and long-term uh, research, knowing what our financial uh, restraints are, but also realizing that to sacrifice all of our research also is to cut off our nose to spite our face because it means our future. And as much as we have attempted to encourage young people to go into these fields in engineering and scientific research, it's beginning to pose questions for them as to whether there's going to be a role in the future. Not that we've impressed a number of, enough of them yet to do it, but I'm concerned about that and like to hear your comments on it. I realize how significant this research is, but I also know that we are operating under great uh, financial restraints. And if it was left up to me, I would not cut this area because I really sincerely feel that research is our future. And so I'd like to have your comments on how you think we can best focus for the short term and the long term. Uh, absent anyone else, uh, I'd be happy to try to answer that. Uh, obviously, this is one of these things that uh, you can't do all short term and you can't do all long term. It takes some balance. Uh, the, uh, the advancements from science uh, have been said to drive about 85 percent, up to 85 percent of the growth in our economy. And by my own calculations, that suggests that uh, uh, about uh, each percentage point you add to the number of scientists and engineers in this country creates about a million jobs. So there is great leverage to be had here. Uh, we are not doing well at attracting young people into science and engineering. Uh, in fact, out of 93 nations, we rank 79th of the fraction of, of bachelor degrees that go to science or, and engineering. Uh, but I think what it takes is, is, is balance. And in business, I have learned that at times that you have to cut your overall budget. You, uh, there are some cases that you increase the budget, some areas. And science and engineering are one of those areas. Marketing is probably another. And I think that is true of government as well. First of all, I want to thank you, Ms. Johnson, for your uh, support for science. Um, in terms of short term, we will do everything possible with the budget that we have to make sure that safety and security for uh, not just NSF colleagues, but for everybody, contractors, scientists who travel to Antarctica, is ensured. So we will do everything possible uh, in, in the present environment. Going to the long term, I fully resonate with your concern. And I also echo what um, Mr. Agustin just said. NSF receives approximately $7 billion a year from U.S. taxpayers to support science. Last year, we supported 300,000 individuals in over 2,000 institutions in the country. I would argue, based on a lot of evidence, that the return to the U.S. Treasury, based on that annual $7 billion investment, is many, many, many times the $7 billion. And that is a compelling enough reason, in addition to the jobs and everything else, uh, to continue to support science. I am very concerned about um, our ability to compete with a rising competition from all over the world for not only science and engineering research, but also for human talent. Our ability to attract and retain talent in science, both from domestic talent and, and uh, talent from all over the world, which this country has relied on very heavily. And if we lose that, I think it will be a major competition. So I very much appreciate your concerns. Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I would say that one of the things that we really looked hard at is the productivity of, of your scientists and your, that community. And one of the things you want to do is you, you can increase their, their uh, productivity a lot if you give them the right facilities and logistic support. Right now, I would say that if you go down and you visit the Antarctic, you will see that it is not efficient for them. And, and, it just, and it begs for the fact that if you can really help that, if you can really make sure they have the proper logistics infrastructure underneath them, it will be amazing how much more their time is worth, not only to the NSF and to the science community, but really to the country. 
uh, one of the big things in this country is transportation infrastructure. It is what fuels our productivity. And if you do it right, you compete very well. Well, I think we are competing for those young people. And when they go down and, 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 and do, a, do a tour down the Antarctic, you could just imagine if they go down there and given some of the things that we saw, if you give them world-class stuff, they will give you world-class results. The problem is, is it is hard to get ahead of that, especially on logistics. I was the J-4 um, for the Joint Staff looking at logistics. The one place everybody seems to think they can always take money is logistics, and normally logistics infrastructure. And all you have to do is look at what happens when a Sandy or something comes through and you go, boy, I sure wish we would buried all those electrical lines. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we can get ahead of now and really do pay back some dividends. And so that is one of the things that we really focused on in the Blue Ribbon Panel with the understanding that we are trying to increase science and reduce costs. Thanks. Ranking Member Johnson, two, two points from an Antarctican view. First. Antarctica is extraordinarily attractive to young people. Uh, it really turns on high school classes. Uh, it, it, we surveyed in our report and we asked about, we asked, do you have enough young people to do your research or enough Americans wanting to go to Antarctica and do research? We got a resounding uh, reply that everybody wants to go, everybody's interested, there's no shortage. So this is, an, like NASA, this is an extraordinarily attractive place where young people can really get the idea of science, how to do it, and want to do it. So I think Antarctica is really not suffering that way. And I think the second thing is the science community worries about the price of logistics. We worry about the price of the pole and the pole station and whether it was worthwhile, all of it. And we worry about the logistics taking over the minimal science budget. It is only 20 percent. If you shrink it, a lot of good grants won't get funded. I know more about NIH where the funding rates get down to 10 percent and 8 percent and you lose competitive and you just start losing people at that point. You can't shrink the science too much. And there is an anxiety, and I speak for the community, of what people have told me. They worried that logistics will get 100 percent of it and there won't be any science. So those are the worries. Thank you very much. My time is up.